and hello 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 boys and girls welcome back to the channel it's of course your host marley startled and i am back from my holidays um and so i've had quite a nice time of course it's been a hot day in the uk about a week ago i uh, spent it at home with the curtains drawn and the fan on uh, with a nice iced drink of coke uh, and uh, i've just thoroughly been enjoying myself just not doing anything i think as you get older you uh, enjoy doing nothing i know there's a bit of a what do you call it a bit of a, a push these days to on your weekends have to have something to talk about like oh i went to uh, went to this festival or i went uh, off to this restaurant but i think as you get older you think uh, you just want to do nothing that is what you want to do on your weekends and sometimes people feel like it's a waste of a, a weekend or a waste of a, of, a, of a holiday but i personally think that uh, the days where you could just like stay the whole day in bed are the best in any case, we are back. Uh, I've got a whole new batch of games uh, and uh, a new DLC has come out for Unity of Command 2, which is the British North Africa campaign. I still need to do the Barbarossa campaign and I still need to do the Stalingrad campaign, which I may do at a later date. You know what I'm like, I'll probably get halfway through a campaign, fail dismally and stop playing. But in, in any case, uh, there's also Tropico, uh, I think 5 or Tropico 6 I've just uh, recently purchased. Uh, which will be doing the main storyline of uh, but uh, I thought it's Friday so I think we'd focus more on Unity Command and because it's quite an easy game to get into not too interesting to watch but uh, it's still a pretty nice and fun and relaxing game to take a look at anyway let's begin so let's start our new campaign and start the Desert Rats DLC which covers Greece and North Africa for the British perspective, and then eventually I'll get around to doing Barbaroska, Moscow 41, Stalingrad. But uh, for now, we're going to do this on normal. I've been normally playing on easy because I'm a filthy casual, but we'll be doing it on normal difficulty right now. Let me open up my bag of munchies as well. I need my bag of munchies. Mmm, lovely stuff. So, Africa 1940. France surrendered to the Axis powers. Vichy is now in charge. Mussolini's doing his thing. Italy has now declared war on Greece, and Italy gains only Armiga. Mussolini's armies were stalled. Bleh. That was bad, man. But we prepare to do our counterattack. <laughs> on all fronts. I don't think the Allies took the, uh, the Italians seriously. So, the Battle of Britain has been won, but the Allies' cause is still very much on the back foot. We need to show the world we are capable of winning. Utilising the initially modest forces of Middle East command, you must take the initiative in the Mediterranean and African theatres. Italy is the weak link, and we will target the colonial empire first. Your main objectives are to liberate Ethiopia and secure the Suez Canal by expelling the Axis forces from Egypt and Libya. Improvise what you have on hand as our best forces are still needed for defence of Britain. So we've been quite lucky, we got our first Blenheim uh, and I don't think we're going to spend any money on our Bedfords just yet because we're going to be saving our money just in case things go horribly wrong. So the Iparus Offensive. On October 28, 1940, Italy declared an utterly unprovoked war on Greece. This invasion stays from the Italian-occupied Albania was launched on Mussolini's orders with more wishful thinking than actual preparation. Odusse's woefully inadequate forces were stopped cold by the tenacious Greek defenders. In just over a fortnight, the offensive had floundered and the Greek army counterattacked. So we get to play the Greeks. 
And I don't think I'm going to invest a lot of points in the Greeks or a lot of um, PP because I don't think we get a recurring use of those troops later on throughout the uh, campaign. Of course, Unity Command 2 campaigns are persistent, and so if you lose a lot of troops, lose a lot of equipment, or spend a lot of points at the start, you may not be able to win later on. So GHQ Dispatch. We have sent the Italian invaders reading. Now punish their hubris and launch a counteroffensive. Your main objective is to push the enemy out of Ipirus if the opportunity arises. You are further authorised to advance into Albania. Be aware the Italians are rushing substantial reinforcements to the area. The time is of the essence. Finally, keep in mind the army is not suited for too many direct and bloody assaults. Make diligent use of HQ actions. Note the 3rd Royal Hellenic Corps has artillery in its force pool at your disposal. So in short, a lot of this will be focusing on... Um, we focusing on... Let me first go to... Uh, I don't think I need turbo mode. A lot of this will be focusing on using our HQs and the bonuses these provide. So on our first core, we have got no reinforcements, no reinforcements. And the third, we have got artillery, which of course we will give this fellow here and this fellow here. And then of course we want to buy artillery for our units down south as well to make them lean, mean, killing machines if possible. But sadly we cannot because we have not got a deployment phase. So let's take a look at our logistics. You can see here we've already got a logistics loss there, so we want to make sure the next turn these guys are supplied. Uh, enemy logistics are of course located all along here. Let's just change this so we can track our objectives. And so it's probably going to be a bit of a grind to push through. Um, you're not going to really be able to do any breakthrough, so to speak. Uh, but our main effort will be trying to get these new bonus points and of course getting that resupply node. In any case, first things first, these guys aren't deployed, so we can attack here. See if we can move any troops up. Nope. Nope. Move these guys forward. And one to one, is it worth it? Probably not. That's worth it because we've got some reinforcements there. These guys do not have their artillery enabled, so we're going to have to do a faint attack. So faint attacks effectively suppress the enemy, uh, one of the enemy points. So they've got steps, so you can see one full step means they've got one combat unit in play. The rest are blanked out, which means that they are suppressed. Suppressed units don't bring their power to bear, and therefore a strong unit, if sufficiently suppressed, will become very vulnerable. Um, if you kill steps, of course, they lose those steps and that power later on. So we'll resupply there, do a faint attack there, and now you can see these guys are fully suppressed, and so now they will no longer have any points. Unfortunately, we did not do enough damage to them, and so we are sort of paralysed, but hey-ho, first turn, it is what it is. So not a lot of movements in the first turn. So the enemy is now dug in, which means it's going to be harder to shake them. We can of course use our artillery, or we can of course use our set piece attacks. So set piece attacks um, effectively uh, get rid of entrenchment, and so it's very important that you use them to breach the enemy to prevent them continually moving forward. Let's pin one to one. Unfortunately, we still have not been able to move the enemy from his position yet. Uh, we need to take this course by turn four, so we've got time. And then we want to also start damaging these units as well. So first thing first, suppress with our artillery. That did nothing. Sometimes RNG be like that. Repair the bridge. And deploy our new troops.
And there we are, taking that objective. Which gives us 20, peep, uh, 20 prestige, which we can use later on. Of course, we did lose some troops in the attack, but these are Greeks, and so I don't think it's going to be the end of the world for us. No supply there. Uh, we probably should use our Bedford to resupply that fellow there if we can. There we are. Supply very important to keep your troops still in the fight. It's going to be a gradual battle. We can't do much about this. Cut off this new unit. We got very lucky there. One to one. One to two. Let's do one to two. Two weeks, so that's going to take a pounding. There's not much I can do about it. And leave these guys to their fate. I'm tempted just to go around these units, if I'm honest with you. them out. This guy's going to end up starving. Uh... Uh, let's move this way. We can... Suppress this guy. Now we'll be nice and weak next time. This guy's red and truly starved. Move artillery up. Could move the cavalry up this way as well. Just haven't decided yet. Uh, we'll do a set piece attack on him. Just to weaken it. We may get pushed back there, but hey ho. RNG may, may not be a kind mistress to us. So we couldn't destroy a division by turn two. It's not the end of the world, but hey ho. No supply, so we do have to push this guy off because he is taking a lot of our supply. As you can probably tell, we can no longer supply our troops in the air. And I can't move this guy down. So I may take off one of our supply points here. And potentially use the Blenheim. not worth losing the, the troops over, if you know what I mean.
No, it's just not worth it. We'll take our time on this. I mean, I can afford to lose these troops because, of course, I'm not getting them back, but... I'm just trying to get in a conservation mindset. Still think we should keep this supplied if possible. So I suspect we should be bombing this. There we are, nice and free. We can now push through here. And now we can hopefully try and get around this way. Yeah, these guys are well and truly starved. I can't get them out of the way. There we are. And we're making progress. It's just uh, slow progress. I'm tempted to go one turn. Without supply for these guys. And then I can hopefully put down a supply point closer to the front. Like so. There we are. I can put this down. Now, if I move over here, how bad is the supply going to be? So, let's get that supply point. This is the more important point we need to uh, focus on. One to one. Uh, let's do a suppression on that. Nope. Okay, let's uh, move this, move that. Alas, I won't be able to push these guys off this turn, but I'll be able to push them off next turn. In the meantime, One to one. One to one is a good trade with uh, with Greeks. Of course, sometimes the RNG lets you down. have it. Our supply point, we can put this down here. Put, get rid of these supply points. So I can put it down closer to the front and move these guys up. So our next push should be Kosura. It should be easier said than done. It's going to take some time to push. No, no point wasting troops trying to break this. We should just keep on going steadily forward. I get round? No.
Let's put our supply point down here. And see what we want to do. So we can't really break this yet. I'm tempted just to go around it. And try and go to him there instead. And this is going to start running out of supply as well. Uh, I want to take Barat by turn 13, but that's going to be a real nightmare to push. I want those, I want those sweet, sweet prestige points, but uh, alas, I don't think I'm going to get them. So they want me to take Himar first, so if we bomb Himar. That's a nice bomb. Cornered, but not dead. There we are, Mars Rs. Now we can start moving up to Valor and Barat, but Barat is just going to be the nightmare one. Okay, not the end of the world. Although this may prove a problem, I don't think I can stay here. These guys are going to start starving if I'm not careful. Need to take this objective. Uh... Okay, there we are. Now we just have to take these objectives. Can I move forward a bit more? No. Got to be careful because, again, we're going to get into a position where we have no supply. I can live with that because that's actually weakened them rather considerably because I can counterattack there now rather painlessly. I've already taken Hamar once so now I can move and put the rest of my assets into something a bit more important. And take the risk.
I need guys. I basically starve star now. I can't. I can't do anything to save them, which is unfortunate. We'll take our time. Yeah, that's that was gonna happen. I made a mistake crossing that river. No supply. Ah. Oh. All right, Barat is a lost cause. I don't think I can push Barat. We'll push her. Law instead. Now, City in Ruins has basically doomed me. They're all digging in now. Oh, well, the question is, do I attack to take this objective, or do I try and actually win the scenario? I think I've got no choice but to uh, attack to take the objective, especially because all my guys are now starving to death. There's no point pushing over there anymore. Sadly, I couldn't take the bonus objectives, but hey-ho. At least I got the other objectives on time. Because I'm going to need them for later. So no means no. Prior to the declaration of war, the Italians produced a ludicrous ultimatum to the Greek Prime Minister, Ionis Metaxas. The answer came in one simple word, Orshi. No, from then on, October 28th has been celebrated as no day in Greece. There you go, more you know. Compass 1. With no railway and too few trucks, the Italian 10th Army's lethargic advance into Greece in 1940 could go no further than City Brani. Mussolini has been sorely mistaken in his assumption that a mere show of force would be enough to make the British Army Empire cave. By December, the outnumbered but highly motivated and mobile Western Desert Force was ready to launch Operation Compass. Utilising speed and force concentration, General Val hoped to kick the lumbering mass of Italians out of Egypt. And our bonus objective, if we can achieve it, is Bardia. Which I don't think we're going to be able to achieve. Mm. Sorry, I'm munching away, aren't I? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. For months, the Italians have remained dug in and static near Sidi Barani. We are massively outnumbered, but Middle East Command assessed a better mobility and training of our forces will make up for this. The orders to conduct deep penetration of the Italian front line while encircling and destroying the units. Note, in this campaign, you command your forces generally at brigade level. To simulate, each unit can accommodate only five steps and two specialists. Note 2. Two new types of hex cyber play a significant role in this theatre, which is an escarpments. For further details, 
Enter to train T view to consult the map legend rooftop. So all that really means is that certain new um, terrain tiles mean you can't attack certain routes and so on and so forth. So the first thing we do is pump up our trucks. And then we upgrade our tanks. We have everything we've got. And then we hope for the best. So our first objectives is City Barani and then Isolate Bardia. Now if we can take Bardia that really helps us but if it can't then it's not the end of the world. But we want to get those extra bonus ones because I thought they'll probably give us good loot and um, more points. So it's a bit of a combination between what you want to do and uh, whether or not you can pull it off. So our first objective is obviously trying to get around these vehicles. So we want to weaken these bad boys as soon as possible. should hopefully allow us to breach the enemy positions and relocate around a target. In the meantime, hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't get slapped by a... the enemy tanks and so on that are lurking behind. Now I don't want to attack this yet, it's not worth it, because I don't want to, I can't afford to lose steps. So this guy's already out of supply, which is always a good, uh, a good indicator of things to come. But in any case, we have now circled this objective, and now we can break through. Again, not worth attacking, that's not worth it. Book Book can wait till turn nine. I'm not willing to uh willing to die for Book Book. Uh, let's undo that move. I wanna move it somewhere actually rather secure. Uh, let's undo that move as well. I'm going to move it as close as possible to resupply my armies. So we should take City Barani pretty quickly now that it is being encircled, but they will probably want us to take it now. So if we take a look at some of our troops, which is going to have the highly, highest likelihood of success. 1 to 2, 1 to 2. And that's City Barani taken. With this we can now focus on our next objective, which will be of course bullying Book Book. But I do want to keep pushing around, but unfortunately I'm limited by the lack of supply. So I can't just keep pushing slap dash because it will just get me killed. And so we just wait. We should just wait. Wait for those guys to starve. My guys are starving already, so I won't be able to attack next turn for some of my troops. But hey ho, it's the price one pays. So immediately resupply these where possible.
and now we can open up door green which basically means putting that down there so we've got two more of these i don't really want to waste them yet let's relocate this guy over here this guy over here we have our new bombardment and now we can hopefully do another encirclement over at Salam as well, uh, depending on whether or not we have enough of our supplies to do it. Not the end of the world, those guys are starving, we can counterattack. And then we can put down our new supply point over here. So we need to take Isolate Bardia by turn 6. Probably not going to be possible um, with the current situation we find ourselves in. Now, if I take a bit of a risk here, we may be able to pull it off. Mm, we can bomb this. Probably not going to do anything, but may as well. No supply. Why no supply? I just got hit by bad luck here. Can I send a tank back? I can, but it's not worth it. Ooh. I'll isolate Bardia. I won't be able to take Bardia this turn, but um, I got hit by bad luck, sadly. Um, my boy, the team down. And I won't be able to take Bardia this turn. It is what it is. It is what it is. It just means that in the next camp uh, mission we're going to struggle to try and take those positions. So, fit asset, we get one free Desert Air Force. Probably I'm going to buy another Blenheim as a backup, because Blenheim is actually rather useful. And then I'm going to continue on. So with the envelopment of Bardia and the decimation of the Italian 10th Army, veterans of the Indian 4th Division could be spared and sent east, uh, sent to East Africa. Their place was to be taken by the untested Australian 6th Division. Even so, Italian resistance in Libya was so tepid and disorganised, the Operation Compass quickly gained momentum again. Indeed, it seemed possible the Italians could be kicked out of Libya and thus expelled from Africa entirely. I don't really see much of the early North Africa campaign, I'll be honest with you. It's something that's not really covered in, uh, in a lot of the mainstream historical media, so it's quite entertaining to watch. We've had to take a quick pause in Operation Compass as your Indian units were sent to East Africa and replaced by the Australian 6th Division. With the swap complete, we're ready to unleash you once again. Happily, the Italian defenders are still dazed from their recent ordeals. We are ordered to drive from Bali to Tobruk with all possible haste. Use your infantry to take the vital ports while allowing your armour to leapfrog ahead. Your goal is to drive the Italians out. So, because we didn't take Bardia, we're sort of limited now on uh, our advance, and so this is going to be a bit of a, a, a limiting factor. In any case, we can continue to upgrade our units. Of course, upgrading our tanks first. And then seeing what else we can upgrade with whatever's left, which sadly is uh, not a lot. Then, of course, we pump up our supply early on.
and then see where we want to take. So I believe there's some objective over here, which is going to be a bit of a nightmare to get to, but this is sort of a race uh, mission, if you know what I mean, sort of a YOLO strat. So because we haven't taken Bardia, we now need to hopefully push these guys off. Now we're going to have to use our bombs to push them off. Which it means it's sort of a waste of a turn, but uh, hey ho, it is what it is. I shouldn't have done that. I'm blocked off now. In any case, we'll just send the infantry forward. Oh, mistakes were made. In the meantime, let's keep on moving up our command as well, when we can. Because we need to gun it. We need to gun it all the way down to Benghazi. Now, I believe there is a sort of a cheeky strat where you can sort of gun across here if you've got the supply trucks, but I don't know whether or not we'll be able to pull it off. Go, objective taken. Move to contain. Send the rest of the troops forward. So I want to brook because the brook is a pretty safe objective. And it's it's where the supply line is, so if I can't take the brook, then I may as well not bother. One to two, is one to two worth it? Probably not. When do I need to take the book by turn 7? I've got plenty of time to take the book. I can wait till next turn to finish these guys off. Because I have to take this by turn 8, which I've got plenty of time to do. So I'm pretty happy with the current situation. Okay, I'm going to see if I'm going to go round these guys. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare trying to keep these guys supplied, but... Yeah, it is what it is. And then we're going to go one turn without supply here, so we can put that down a bit closer to the front line. No emergency supply. Uh, let's use some recon. Is there any troops in the mini? No, there is not. And then we'll take this and keep going forward then. So our next race will really be Michelli and Derna. Now Michelli they need to take by turn 8 so we've got plenty of time to do it. Oof, uh, is it worth pushing over there? Probably not. Slow down by the uh, ever-irritating troops. Now the trick here will be to gun it. So once I've uh, secured Michelli, I'm going to try and gun it. So the main objective now will be to get rid of our supply line temporarily. 
Bomb. Achieve nothing. I'm still going to attack it just because... Sadly, I'm not going to be able to hold it. And then move the contain. Yeah, this guy's going to have no supply this turn, not the end of the world, because I am going to be nice and supplied now. So we can try and bomb this. Uh, which, see, which is more important to take? Michelli is more important to take now. It's going to be too much of a nuisance to try and hold, so we're going to move to block. And hopefully that guy stays in his one place. Now if he decides to cut us off, we're going to have a problem. Okay, we can now move forward with all possible haste. I do love it when I get lucky. Is there anyone on that position? Yes, yeah, thank you. A nice little Bedford truck, which is always good for us. Do a little reconnaissance over here, make sure there's no enemies blocking us. And then bomb it. Because we're going to try and aim to get round and force them to surrender. So once you take the objective, you no longer have to hold it, so that means you can really start pulling back. You can also get some uh, troops there. You can get some reinforcements at Mizus, I believe they're like guerrillas, but uh, probably not worth getting. You are going to go without supply for this, unfortunately, it is what it is. But that's why you're going to go here first, pick that up, and just uh, survive. And there's our second Bedford, so now we have a nice Bedford supply. Hope RNG is with you, which it thankfully is. Now we can either try and contest these, which isn't really worth it. Or we can just uh, plow on through behind the enemy lines. I should be able to survive next turn. And once they've surrendered, we can continue pushing. But they want me to take better form now. I'm not going to be able to take better form now, unfortunately. But I should be able to take it later anyway. So really you're supposed to use two tanks, one to go north, one to go south, to get both objectives within the time frame. Alas, I cannot do that because I'm too low on my supply. So 
So that means I'm going to start taking penalties, but hey ho, to my total bonus points, but it's not the end of the world. Of course, you don't get paratroopers, I believe, in this one, so of course the, the real option would be to, you know, drop a couple of paratroopers and uh, hopefully win that way, but alas, um, you cannot. So now we're going to get less points, but at the end of the day, I'm not complaining too much. It was a pretty, altogether pretty successful operation. Mm -hmm. So we get bonus um, supply for next turn, which is great for us because we took a lot of bonus objectives, uh, which is quite important for this campaign because without it, you can have a bad time. So all-encompassing, with just over 35,000 men and less than 2,000 casualties, the Western Desert Force killed or captured almost the entire 150,000 strong Italian 10th Army. Operation Compass was one of the most efficient victories of World War II, and combined with Mussolini's bombing offences in Greece, it would forever doom the Italian army to be a victim of mostly unjustified mean jokes. I mean, you just don't realise the extent of the Italian collapse. 35,000 men versus 150,000, that's almost three times the number. And that's three times. But fortunately, this DLC also covers Ethiopia, which no one really pays any attention to uh, in most uh, most World War II examples, uh, or most World War II history. So you get to see the Ethiopian Blitzkrieg, which is a bit of a nightmare. So by December 1940, Italian units had advanced into Sudan in the summer now, sat exposed in their positions near Kassala. Defeats suffered by the Italian forces in North Africa and Greece meant there was no help in sight for these troops. To avoid disaster, the Duke of Aosta decided on a general withdrawal back to the more defensible terrain in Abyssinia and Eritrea. The withdrawal would prove rise as the veteran Commonwealth forces began arriving from North Africa in January 1941. Sorry Duke of Aosta, it's, uh, it's ogre. You're doomed. Doomed. So, the Italians have given up their meagre gains in Sudan and pulled back to Eritrea. Your forces near Kassala are ordered to strike across the border and pursue the enemy. Simultaneously, Briggs' force operating out of Port Sudan will now make its way down to the coast from the north. If all goes to plan, both forces will converge on the Italian positions near Karen. We have air superiority and material dominance, but don't underestimate how awful the infrastructure and training is in this part of the world. So up north we've got our reinforcement troops there, and down south we've got our troops as well. Now. See if we can reinforce. No, we can't. Of course, the Bedford truck is the most important one, or the mechanized is the most important one. And so we again mass upgrade that as much as we can. And then, of course, we want. We can't really upgrade these, which is unfortunate, but we can instead upgrade these objectives instead. So if we give this guy some Indian troops and give them a quarter pounder. A lot of the time it's using as much prestige as possible in every single scenario uh, as, as sort of an all or nothing attempt to survive. So these guys should be supplied for the first turn. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this down and see where it leads us. I've got a couple of bedrooms in, in reserve for my cards and so we're going to hopefully be able to be, be pretty safe in what we do. So this guy is going to be pretty much useless. I mean, yeah, I could attack that, but I don't want to. Because <laughs> it's pretty rough. So, of course, we've got our mass upgraded Bedford uh, mechanized, which looks like a truck, so um, we can just plow our way through. At the same time, we can probably move south as well and take our time. So if we take a look, I need to take Baruna by turn 6, uh, Blessia by turn 5, and a Cordat by turn 6. So really it's all going to be rather simultaneous. So 
So using our copious supply, we can just continue on. I'm going to resupply this just in case. And then we're going to see what we can do about these bad boys here. Oh, easy. And we get a bed for truck. So this is what I like to do. As soon as I get a bonus point, I use one. And now I've got a nice resupply bed for truck. So we can see our supply is getting rougher down, uh, further down this way. So actually, we're probably going to go one turn without supply here. Take a look at our supply. We should be okay. Um, three spaces, two spaces. We should be okay for one turn. And then we'll just keep leapfrogging as you do. Let's move up our HQ to make sure we can keep our bonus activities. So I want to attack with my weakest units first, if possible. Because I want to use this to keep moving forward. Alas, it didn't really work as intended. But we can put down a new supply depot, remove this supply depot, and then see what we want to do about taking this objective. I don't want to waste the troops just yet, it's just not, it's not worth it. No supply here. Next, so this next turn they're going to be uh, unfed. Oh, but we've got a new bonus point. So once again, all the Bedfords. Lovely stuff. I do like Bedford spam. So we need to take Baruna by turn 6, so we've got plenty of time to do this. Take a look at our best troops, see which is going to do the most damage. Probably going to be this fat bad boy, I believe. Worth the point set trade, worth the point trade. And now we can wait. We can wait for two turns for uh, Ubuntu to starve. One to one trade, two to zero. I'm going to wait one turn. Just to see if I have to do this. I take two damage on this. Yes, I do. Supply is tight. I'm going to use one of my trucks. And achieve nothing. And go one more turn with these guys starving. There's no point wasting troops on that. And I've been blocked. I've been blocked. Turn six and I've been blocked. Bruh. I could have taken this as well. What do you mean I can't take it? Because of that fucking HQ.
That's so frustrating. Like, I can't do anything about it. That's so cursed. I just have to accept the, uh, the situation I find myself in. So that's not very fair. I mean, that's not very fair at all. Because I can't move through it because of that HQ. I don't think I'm going to be able to take this objective either. Not the end of the world. Oh, you've got to live with it. You've got to roll the punches. So, Operation Canvas. British forces in East Africa are wholly unprepared when Italy declared war in summer 1940. Taking advantage of this, the Italians advanced into Kenya, meeting little opposition. However, poor logistics limited the scope of their advances. Months later, South African and British colonial forces conducted a successful all-arms raid on the Italian border, post at Alawak. This demonstration unnerved Duke, Duke, the Duke of Deosta. To such a degree that he opted to abandon his gains and fall back to the Italian Somaliland and Abyssinia. General Cunningham's East Africa force would soon follow. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. <laughs> so, after months of small raids and skirmishes, we have finally assembled enough troops to attack Italian Somaliland and southern Abyssinia. Our main force is concentrated in the east and should advance into Jubaland. Take the port of Kismayo and cross the Juba River. Once across, see if your mobile troops can make a dash from Mogadishu. Indication is it not defended. In the west, your forces are more scattered. The front line here may be very fluid, but reports suggest the Italian forces are weak and lack mobility. Be warned that hostile Marilla tribes west of Lake Takuna may impede your advance. So if we take a look, we need to take Mogadishu, which should be undefended. Uh, Gilib, uh, Afmedo, which I really want to take because that has got, of course, plus 20 prestige points. And we have got on the left. A lot of scattered troops, which will make things a lot harder to uh, to advance on. But we have to take Frontier Wells, Kalam, Moyao, Mega, and to take Moyao, we need to take it by turn ten. So we've got plenty of time. Anyway, we need to put our supply points down. See if we've got any troops. I'm pretty sure you there's a truck unit you can uh, use in this scenario, but I guess not. Buy the most expensive stuff, engineers, and of course, cry because you can't afford anything else. So our first main task will be to push up north this way. Immediately begin starving because that is how it goes in this uh, scenario. A lot of this is just logistics hell. But I believe they can go one turn and we can put a supply point down there. Probably. I mean I could put a Bedford down now but it's not worth it. Get rid of this because they're going to be starving next turn anyway. Get rid of this because they're going to be starving next turn anyway. And begin moving our way down. I've got air attacks that I cannot use. Game. So with these guys starving, we can put down one of these bad boys, put down two of these, 
see if we can move our troops over here, open up a supply line, which we have opened, but we're going to have to use a Bedford truck because these guys will be starving next turn. And hopefully we'll be able to pick up some more Bedfords at a later date. So there's our Mahmado. Just a little bombing run off Mado. And there's our points. So with our two lines linked up, we no longer need these supply depots because we're going to put them down closer to the front line. In the meantime, we should be getting our new reinforcements, which are just going to bomb it over this way. I'm going to move the EAF over on the right as well. Yeah, these guys got no supply. Give it. Uh, let's take a look. How many spots can you forward can you go? You can go six. Oh, we're good. One to two. How about one? You can go one tile. Actually, you can't go one tile. Well, there's no point advancing here then until I've got more supply. So our next objective should be, which is the next one we're going to take, Frontier Wells. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, that's all I can say. We'll give that a go, but I don't think we're going to pull that off. Yeah, we won't be able to reach Frontier Wells. Uh, it's even got a bombing run on it. Oh god. So lucky. Born to be lucky. And then we can move this fellow further up north this way. And then go to this. Very, very logistical. This, uh, this level, like you just got to focus purely on logistics. A lot of the Ethiopian campaign is like that, unfortunately. Oh, the game crashed. Blech. So uh, for some reason, the game has a tendency of crashing. Um, when you move too fast uh, and it can't keep track of uh, the casualties or the prisoners. That's a recent thing that's come up. I'm not sure why, but I'm not going to complain too much. Okay, let me just check my temps. 90 degrees temps, not probably not the best temps really. I don't know why it's 90 degrees, I have limited to frame rate. But hey ho, let's continue playing. Let's try that again. So now if we wait a bit and then push over, now we can attack. Still no supply here, a bit of a nuisance, but uh, we can fix that next turn. Let's give these guys a bit of supply. Uh, game, where's my, where's my boundary? Game did not like that. Okay, the boundary is born back into existence. This is where RNG screws me over. Oh no. Wasn't too bad. And next ones are turn 6, turns 8, and turn 10. So our main focus is to drive across the river. Uh, 
Hmm. I'm going to have to resupply these guys and hopefully try and uh, take that port before they starve. Uh, cursed. So what that basically means is I need to take this now. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull off. So those guys are probably going to starve to death. Cursed, cringe, but oh well. So I can't cross here. I've got to uh, cross down south. So we're going to bomb this. Put down our new supply point. Okay, five supply points, I'll take that. And then we're going to have to hope for the best in terms of trying to get these guys out. But I, if I can't cross, I can't cross, you know. I don't have any sort of supply chain that will save me. Now we're doomed. Sorry boys, but you guys are doomed. Uh, unless I can put a supply point down here and save you, which is unlikely. So those troops will now just break apart. So we may as well abandon chasing this objective and start moving down to the right hand side instead. Going towards Mega. Nothing. And then we'll do our sprint of our truck down to Mogadishu, and that should be the end of that. Send these guys over here. So, can I take you yet? No. No. That's, that's no. So, I might as well go send these troops over here. I'm going to send this guy around. I'm going to have to use a Bedford truck here because I forgot that I lost my supply line. So I've just had to retreat completely from this sector. Uh, a bit a bit cursed, but hey oh. So Mega's the next on the agenda. I don't think I'm going to take Mega this turn, but... Uh, should be able to take Mogadishu just you anyway. Not too worried about troops dying of uh, lack of supply because their steps are re uh, reinvigorated so to speak after they are after they're lost so it's not the end of the world As long as they're not picked up by the enemy, which I don't think they are. I should have worried about those tribesmen, but hey-ho, I didn't pay attention. Anyway, we'll get to Mogadishu.
They may, they may aim to take my supply line, which is not good. We won't take Mega by turn eight, sadly. Alas. But we will take Mogadishu, which is the most important one because that gives me a load of points I need. Okay. So, try for round two. Again, it's just more to keep them occupied rather than actually pushing. Yeah, no Mugger to shoot this time. Oh no, Mega. Or Kalam for that matter. Not the end of the world, but hey, no. You always want to be completionist so you can get as many points as possible, but sometimes you just can't pull it off. Like, I'm well aware that those guys are gunning for my supply line. Again, blocked by a... The frustration... The frustrating... Nuisance that is. HQs. I'll take Moyao uh, by turn 10, I reckon. Uh, let's bomb you just in case, so in case you have any ideas. That HQ is an absolute nightmare because they're just like, they, they stop you at moving your track. Like that. There we are. Uh, I should. I've closed down one of my supply hubs. Oh, I did not. So there you go. Lots of uh, things I should have done in hindsight, but chose not to. Blocked. Blocked once again. The man who's blocked to death. I mean, I don't lose too many points. Actually, I do. I lose a hell of, hell of a ton of points, but still, points are points. I'm not going to complain too much. I just lose one supply point. And a HQ free upgrade, which isn't the end of the world. Still get plus ten percent supply for next uh, next mission, and this means we go next HQ. So what can we get from this? So if I spend forty, is that right? I just don't think it's worth it. I've already got so many Blenheims. This Middle East replacement card is not isn't very good either. Yeah, why not? Why not? And so we move on to our next campaign, which is going to be an absolute nightmare because with the Germans start coming up. So disaster in Cyrenica. With supply lines stretched beyond capacity and most formations in dire need of rest or replenishment, 10... 13th Corps halts its advance near Beda. Form after destroying the Italian 10th Army. Plans to complete the conquest of Libya were put on hold. Allied attention and reinforcements swiveled to Greece where German intervention seemed imminent. A static Cyrenica command took over the defence of Cyrenica. Its few untested dispersed units were ill-equipped to handle the arrival of fresh German mechanised formations led by General Erwin Rommel, the same Rommel who dashed through France while in charge of the infamous Ghost Division. 
So in other words, we're beasted. So this is what, what the devs have said themselves, it's very difficult to code defensive levels. So um, you have to be quite short and they have to be quite short and sweet. But um, it's a very fun set of levels, what's, what's coming up with the defensive book and so on. So bad news commander, all your veteran units of the XSI ICOR have been sent elsewhere and no proper replacements have been provided due to the situation in Greece. It gets worse. Intel reports that Italians have been bolstered by German formations under the leadership of Erwin Rommel. Knowing his aggressive command style, you should start falling back towards Michele and Bass. Your current force simply cannot hope to hold the line. So you've got a horde of German panzers and uh, yeah, you're not, uh, you're, you're not, not going to stand a chance. You've, you've got a one tag RAD squadron, some armoured brigades, but nothing that's going to hold. So you, really your main effort here is to hold these objectives for as long as possible while bolstering your troops. As much as you can. So the first thing I like to do is move these guys forward so I've got a greater field so I can upgrade my mechanised give them a 50 pounder. Oh wow, I've got a load of points. And begin upgrading my infantry. From there, I'm going to save my prestige now because there's no hope of uh, holding on. And uh, I'm going to start working on plans, schemes to try and withdraw. So my, what I tend to do is withdraw here. Hold for turn two, withdraw back again, withdraw back again, withdraw back again, and use the bonuses the Cyrenica Division, give, uh, the command gives you to dig in a trench. So actually what I need to do is move my Cyrenica further up if possible, which I can't, so that's a bit of a waste of time. But without further ado, let's begin this. So what you can do is you can of course start spending your Blenheims and that to try and hold the line, but uh, it's not really worth it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna buy you enough time to survive. And so let's immediately start falling back. Start digging out Mizus, and these guys can start moving all the way. So at least this is a safe one. Be, be, this is basically a nuisance weapon. It's supposed to be used to sort of cut off enemy punches and breakthroughs. So now we're on the gravy train, start digging in. You can put down a supply hub over here as well. You may want to do that now, just so you've got that extra reach. And hope for the best. Because they're going to punch through you. So we've held to till turn two. We no longer need to hold this objective. Uh, basically means run the fuck away. <laughs> run, run, bitch, run. That's uh, that's effectively what you're doing now. <gasps> while also running this guy away. So I need to help Mazus by turn five. So this is the, this is the nightmare. This is when a nightmare begins. Mm -hmm. 
I probably shouldn't have had that fuel there. Uh. So this movement circle, hope for the best. Uh, this is also probably a good time where you want to start sending some of your troops down to hold the line, so to speak, of that Michele. They may take Tangedda by turn six. I don't think I'll be able to hold it, especially if they decide to keep on advancing. Hopefully they don't, but... Uh, they probably are. Might as well use this, I don't care about it. Wow, I can actually pay to reinforce my troops, that's uh, that's rare. That's a bit pointless. But I'll give that a go anyway. This is where you start to panic because they've just overwhelmed you completely and you've got no troops to hold the line. So uh, I may have lost this. I think I have lost this. I don't think I can uh, come back from this. Unless I do some schemes. This is just a Hail Mary now. It's desperately lost. I just got to ration the supplies. I can't, uh, I can't do anything about this. Well, Benghazi's been held, so I can now withdraw back into the sunset. You guys should not be getting supplied as well. <laughs> desperation. Can you taste desperation? I sure can. because I'm about to be cut off from my port. Ah! Yeah, I think it's Ogre. I'm gonna, I'm gonna surrender. It's Ogre. I can't hold up. My mistake there was... ...being a potato. 
it was it was basically bad micro of uh, of of the supply lines. But now I get one free air attack, so it's not the end of the world. Of course, the hardcore gamers would be like, "No, you can't use your free air attack." No, but hey ho, watch me. This guy's just going to run all the way back south. There we are, there we are. Move this guy forward. Uh, supply lines don't need to be accessive. You know, you start bringing it down. Get this guy to dig in. Uh, mistakes are made. Need to dig this guy in first. Move it to Benghazi. I'm going to send this guy over on the right hand side and then what I'm going to do is withdraw these guys back south. In the meantime, Mr. Tank. Thank you very much. I fucked this already. I've already screwed myself up. Mr. Tank, go away. I've made so many tragic mistakes. So start running southwards, start running westwards, Virenica, start moving southwards as well. Actually, you dig in first. Right, same with you. You dig in. Run away! Let's give this guy a bomb. And make the last dash over there. There we go. We should be good now. This guy is going to die. I, I accept. I accept your sacrifice. What do you mean the Germans reverse superiority? That's not very fair now, is it? You're doomed. Um, it was nice knowing you, but you are, in fact, doomed. I suppose I'll bomb you. Yay! And hope for the best there. I'm going to retreat this guy back. You are, you are also doomed, um, just in a different manner.
That's not very fair. Okay, I just need to hold 10 gender by turn 6, which is not going to be happening. Run away! I think I'll be able to get to you in time. And Benghazi's been held, which is great news, so I can now withdraw from Benghazi. I can use the Middle East command, but it's not worth it. And you're also doomed, so uh, good luck with that. Let's throw everything we got at That's not very fair. No. This may not have been a good idea, but I stand by it. YOLO! I need you to uh, sacrifice yourselves for the greater good. As we start to panic. Good, this may keep me alive. Because everyone else is dead. You motherfucker. Uh, no, not one more turn. I'm gonna have to sacrifice. I'm gonna have to make a sacrifice here and lose a supply point. I could, of course, blow my load in terms of uh, all my cards, but I don't really want to do that. Not for a defensive scenario. There's no, There's nothing to be gained from blowing my load doing that. I'm going to have to uh, rethink my strategy. It's not something I tend to have to do. Mm, go with the expensive one. There we are. Good to go. So I think we should abandon Agdebur. And that way I can move two of my tank units over on the right. Nice, nice.
Let him take it. Let him take it. I give you a uh, carte blanche to take the objective. Damn you! That's fine. Uh, and then we'll blow up. Ooh, which is the most vulnerable? You got the most vulnerable. And then we'll move our Cyrenica division that further south. the cards. Don't make me use the cards. Mm, no, that's not going to work. Ugh, the things I'd want to do to you but can't. I'm going to retreat this guy back. Nice try, Chumley. RNG's on my side today. So with that, we run away. Get rid of this supply point, make sure they don't have any supplies. Move this bad boy back. Let's bomb you. One to two, one to one. I don't think it's worth it. I was wrong. That wasn't worth it. You shouldn't be starving. But hey, you are, so there you go. Actually, I don't need to supply this anymore. That I can run. I 
So you can win this if you just spam all your cards just, and hope RNG just like destroys these tanks. But it isn't worth it. You're just going to end up wasting tanks on on, on on wasting your cards on the level you you are supposed to lose. So there's no point doing it. So I think our main objective is to now target the more uh, high value targets like that fellow there. And if we go across this bridge we should be okay and we should be able to dig in here and that should stop the enemy just ploughing around us. See, in this case, they weren't able to capture any of our supply depots, so we were able to sort of hold the line, which is very important. If they'd captured our supply depots, then we would uh, be beasted. See, now it's turn 8 of 8. I can probably move this off and put this on here instead. And know that I'm be secure now. God, I love it when they uh, bomb me. Now I know what it feels like and not have a security. Yeah, so the key what so the, the key to this level is abandoning the first one unless you're gonna invest all your cards in holding. And then of course uh making sure the enemy can't capture your supply depots and allow them to get that extra turn advance. But it was quite uh, quite an intense fellow. Now this level's a pain, I hate it, but hey. -o. So Ethiopian Blitz. By the end of February 1941, the Italian presence in southeastern Abyssinia and Italian Somaliland was collapsing. Even Italian forces further inland were facing desertions of revolts from the indigenous troops and civilians. Informed of the chaos within the enemy's ranks, General Cunningham immediately reorganised his forces for a swift pursuit. Furthermore, the timetable for the naval landings in British Somaliland Operation Appearance was accelerated to coincide with his advance. So this one is just a case of do you enjoy not having supply? Really, the whole Ethiopian theatre is just more supply juggling. So Italian indigenous troops are deserting en masse. You are to aggressively pursue what remains of the enemy's colonial units. Your main force must be to charge up the Strada Imperiale towards the crucial road junction at Djiga, at which point the naval landings of Operation Appearance will commence near Berbera. Simultaneously, the Gold Coast Brigade will undertake a divisionary, diversionary advance towards Nigeli. Waste not one second, Addis Ababa awaits. Note, due to the distance involved in the operation, Mech advises you to motorise the East Africa force using a truck card. Dully noted. So first step in the master plan is of course, dump supply lines down. Probably no real point in upgrading these guys because they're all out of range, but uh, hey ho. I mean, I'll do it anyway because hey, oh. Uh, and these fellows, I can give them a mechanized step, give them some engineers, and not give them anything else because I desperately need to conserve my prestige. So, let's do this. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to bin this card. No point using it. Yeah, your Bedford truck. Uh, so the Bedford truck is what we're going to be using. <laughs> so you've got to get all the way up here and there is no actual supply line up here. So this whole entire road is no railways. So you, there's a naval landing that will occur here around about the time you move up to the centre. But for the most part, you are left to sort of starve and that's why you don't want to be using this as much as you can. Now, very rarely do I mechanise infantry. 
So we go one turn with supply, one turn without. Down a supply point here. There's no point putting supply point down there then. I can just put it here. And then of course pile in our supplies in this sector. Landings, yep, no landings. But you're literally constantly balancing between supply, having supply and uh, not having supply, which is just the nature of the beast. And this is where sort of Unicamp commands is sort of a step above in terms of sort of that turn based strategy because it actually takes into account, you know, needing supply lines and not just dribbling. Landings yet? Yeah, no landings. Uh, okay. So really, this is a struggle work around the Jiga, where unfortunately we're not going to have a lot of uh, supply to keep on pushing at a stage, and we'll have to be sort of used in conjunction with the naval invasion to sort of link up and get some supplies going. Sadly, no supplies yet. So, can I put any supply points down? Nope. I can increase this by one. And this is where you begin to starve. Uh, where's my other unit? There it is. We gotta push over here to link up that next supply site. Which we can go one turn without supply on. There's our naval invasion, which will buy us some time. Bad coal because I didn't. I need. I sort of needed Madeira. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to cry about it. So, naval bombardment. I can kill you. Use that supply to keep going. A little bombardment there. Land alongside, and then land with the rest of the troops. And now we can begin to advance, and of course we'll be advancing westward. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. Still in contact with these guys, so it needs to be emergency resupplied. Oh yeah, another Bedford truck. Um, thank you for the Bedford. You get given a lot of trucks in this campaign. 
death by truck, some would say. So I emerged, immediately emerged to resupply. And bomb blast all the way over here as soon as you can. We should get to Nageli fine. Oh, en route unit. So I, sus I suspect your en route unit will go here, yeah. Run! Now, you've got a choice here. Do you either link up on the east or do you keep pushing on the west? And I tend to decide to normally keep pushing in the west. And I sh should be able to go one turn without supply here. Now I can either retreat from Hurrah. It's not worth to retreat. I should be able to resupply this next turn, so I'm not going to bother. And they've only been out of supply for one turn, so yeah, we're good. Hello. It's not worth the attack. Not worth it. And with that, we can now put down our supply point. These guys will be supplied. And we can continue moving forward. But this is where it gets a bit, uh, bit bruh. Because you think you can now connect this rail line to get resupplied. No, in fact, now you're going to go completely without supplies and tie a route down uh, to Addis Ababa. So good luck trying to get there. I'm going to balance when to push. I'm going to attack you because I've got to. So the next target is the high dower, which of course we've already missed our attempt to take because of course I did not use my resupply. You motherfucker. Oh, no. RNG! RNG, why you do this to me? I can just go round if I feel need. I'm gonna go for it. Oh, I hate you. I hate you so much. Blocked.
Let's see why I just give up and retreat back. No, we're not taking nap today. But alas, we still can't put down any more supply lines. So this is where you just retreat back now. These guys get retreat back, these guys get replenished, and everyone falls back. Anyone at a wash? No. I'm one turn behind on every single objective. I should have kept on advancing. My mistake was not continuing the advance using my trucks. Which is a shame. I could restart this and do this perfectly, but uh, it's too late now. Literally one turn behind. There you go. Not the end of the world. It was not the end of the world. Nigerian Blitzkrieg. With the 23rd Nigerian Brigade advanced from the 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 23rd Nigerian Brigade advanced from the border of Kenya to Mogadishu, continue up the Strad Imperial to Ra and finally dash from Ara to Addis Ababa. All in all, the brigade covered more than 2,000 kilometers in just over 50 days. This remains the fastest military advance over such a distance in history. Again, something you wouldn't know about because no one covered the Ethiopia campaign, probably because it was also painfully one-sided. So the Battle of Keren, basically cut off from the reinforcements and resupplied, the Italian army in East Africa had to pick its battlefields with great care. As the common forces advanced towards Asmara and Massawa, one such location was Keren. This otherwise unassuming town sits on a strategically vital and only rail line leading into the heartland of Italian Eritrea. Furthermore, the town's surroundings offered excellent defensive positions in the form of forts and harsh mountainous terrain. Another grinding level. As expected, the Italians have opted to make a last stand in and around Karen. The town and its surroundings make for a very imposing obstacle indeed. Think rugged granite peaks, with little to no cover for advancing troops in blistering heat. Your orders are to clear as many of the surrounding mountains as possible before launching an attack on Karen itself. Once you break through, utilize your superior mobility and drive hard and fast as Mara. Now there's a lot of points I have to be had here, so I am tempted to bite the bullet and upgrade my units. While also using My artillery. So if, if there was a time to use the artillery, it would be now. Okay, I need to take Mount Amber by turn 3 and this fellow by turn 3. It's going to be a tough nut to crack, but I think I can pull it off. Oh yeah, I should be advancing from the sow as well, but hey ho.
I don't care about HD upgrade, just give me the points. No, don't dig in, please. And then there's to the push down to Masawa. And that's Mara as well. So this will give me 50 PP, but I gotta take that by I can take that by turn seven, or I gotta take that by turn five, so gotta pay attention here. Worth it. Worth it. Although this guy's going to get in my way. Okay, I'm taking Masao this turn. Because it's a supply base. And that gives me my points back. Well, that worked swimmingly, didn't it? This is why I should use a Bedford truck if I'm honest with you. Fine, let's use a Bedford truck. That didn't really help. Quite the contrary. It didn't help at all. What a waste of a Bedford truck. That's what I'll do with that guy now by bombing the hell out of him. Do with him the American way. And now panic because uh, that's not the American way is not working. I've got to take us mound now. Uh, was it worth it? Two, four, six. Yeah, it was worth it. I'm joking, bloody hell. Talk about stubborn. There better not be anyone over there, otherwise I'm, I am going to do a hard reset. Wow, oh, wasn't that fun? Mm. 
job done. Two out of ten, not the, not the end of the world. Probably actually lost more than I gained from uh, from using all my points. Hey ho! That's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. The gratitude of an empire. The whole empire has been stirred by the achievement of the Indian forces in Eritrea, but Winston Churchill was the voice of India shortly after the victory at Karen. Throughout World War II, Indian troops were such a vital part of the British war effort, it is hard to imagine the Britain victorious without them. In light of this, the post-war British effort to stop Indian independence seems all the more shameful. Bruh. Bruh. I needed a... well, we needed a tea, didn't we? Defense of the Brooks. It's another defense mission. Good luck. Uh, panic was only now avoided as the forces of Cyrenica Command fled eastward with panzers of the Africa Corps hot on their heels. Middle East Command had no significant forces it could deploy to stem the tide, and so it was decided that a large garrison be left at the vital port of the Brook. It was correctly believed that the port could be kept out of Rommel's hands. His troops would be forced to halt due to lack of supplies, thus preventing an advance into Egypt. Welcome to the brook, boys. So, things are not looking good. Our best forces have been siphoned off to Greece, and there's simply not enough reserves to form a coherent defensive line. But Middle East Command has hatched a plan. You are to delay the enemy while fortifying a perimeter around the brook. This will not be an easy task, and you should not expect to hold the entire perimeter, but you must hold the port itself. Without it, Rommel will not be able to resupply his panzers, but should the brook fall, there will be nothing to stop an Axis drive into Egypt. So we take a look, see what we can do to fix the situation. And then see what we can do. So generally speaking, it's not a good idea to hold El Adem. Uh, you're not going to stand a chance holding it. Uh, but you should be able to hold perimeter if you are lucky. What sort of train are we on? Mm. I pressed T and I think I crashed. Okay, no. So dunes, so that's just clear. This is desert, yeah. Not worth it. A nice little fort there, I believe, but that's been destroyed. Oh no, it's actually intact. It's not worth it. So why are we uh, falling back? Because we can't we can't hold that, that never-ending force coming towards us. And it's not worth trying to hold that never-ending force. Instead, you just want to dig in and hope for the best. Maybe if we're feeling cheeky, we can potentially do some halting of the front by doing some sabotage of this one brigade, the British motorized, but for now, they're not going to be of any use to us.
and stop moving the tanks around just to be a pain. If they put any supply hubs down, we'll try and take them. So the reason why I'm holding so well here is simply because I'm distracting some of their panzers and I've dug my troops in. If I hadn't dug my troops in, then it would be Ogre. I'm going to put this bad boy back. Alert of them always ends up being lost, so I wouldn't be too worried about that uh, state of affairs. You just want to start digging in now. And that's of course you want to commit all the artillery again to hold the last man, which I highly recommend you don't do. But we all held, uh, and so all together, pretty successful. And that was simply because I used that one unit as a distracting force to stop the tanks coming down, and I got lucky with the dice rolls. But regardless, the Benghazi handicap. With typical stoicism and soldiery dark humour, the Aussie diggers would refer to retreat from Serenica to the brook as the Benghazi handicap. The Germans would later attempt to insult the defenders by calling them rats, but the Australians heartily adopted the term and simply started calling themselves the rats of the brook. Interesting. Interesting. There you go. Again, something that we cover. I can, again, looking at those time periods where I played Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty, and I didn't really see like the different Commonwealth troops, either sort of British or English. I didn't really, didn't actually discern the difference between each nationality in, in, in the war. But then actually when you look at a North Africa campaign thanks to a game like this, you realise actually, ah, yes, the Indian troops did this theatre, the Australian troops did this theatre. So it's all very interesting. Um, that's what I really like about this game, is that it covers theatres and campaigns you normally wouldn't see. Like even in the Blitzkrieg DLC, so yeah, it covers France, but it also covers Norway, and it also covers um, Yugoslavia and Greece, which is really good. Um, so this is why I, I, I normally don't fjord or day one buy... Um, DLCs, but with this game I always buy. Like, like as soon as I hear new news, it's like up oh, straight to the cart. But anyway, disaster in Greece. Fearing German intervention in the Greco-Italian War, the Greeks have initially been reluctant to accept any Allied ground forces on their mainland. But in February, Hitler's army started massing in Romania and Bulgaria, prompting Greece to accept Allied troops dreaming of a Balkan front. Churchill prompted, promptly ordered the Middle East Command to send two Anzac divisions and an armored brigade to Greece. General Wavell, CIC, MEC, was dismayed by this turn of events as it precluded any further pursuit of the routed Italians in Libya. And could two divisions really stave off a determined German attack against Greece? So again, once you actually start looking into Winston Churchill and his sort of strategies and his orders, like the myth of Winston Churchill, we will fight him on the beaches, you actually see a lot of his strategic decisions were pretty bad. Like again, the Gallipoli and First World War, this which could have completely knocked out the North Africa campaign and it's left that soft underbelly straight away. But nope. Um, just really bad ideas by a good old Churchill. But of course he came up with the soft underbelly idea, which is a pretty, pretty nice one. So it's very easy to say, oh, look at all the horrible mistakes this guy made, but actually he had a few good ones as well. So, and at the end of the day, sending troops to support the Greeks was probably a nicer not really a nice, but probably good for morale, especially for the Greeks who had been sort of left to their own devices. Again, short, sharp, defensive maps. Beautiful. Love them. Very technical as well. You have normally think shorter missions are less uh, are easier, 
but generally the shorter ones are more technical because every turn counts whereas of course the larger missions they give you a bit more leeway especially in Barbarossa. So disaster in Greece. Grim news. Yugoslavia collapsed like a house of cards and consequently the Greeks forces manning the Metaxas line were outflanked and have now capitulated. The result of this mess is that our small expeditionary force 6 exposed and in danger of being overrun. You must delay the German onslaught as you fall back towards Athens and the Peloponnese for evacuation. Keep your Anzac forces intact, they must not turn into a second, second Galafri. So try and keep your points alive to get 50 points. Unfortunately we can't immediately upgrade our troops. Uh, but what we can do is take a look to see what we need to do to keep our supplies open. So we need to hold this to turn three, easily achievable. We need to hold Mount Olympus until turn one, which again is easily achievable. And so all we just do is dig in. Well, first things first, we fall back to Larissa, I believe, with this troop. Because we use these sacrificial lambs. The Anzac troops, so it's a little bit, a little bit Australian losses, but screw the Anzacs, okay then. So I move to this side, and then what I'm going to do is retreat this guy back across this river, like so. These are all Greek infantry, um, sacrificial lambs for the cause. And that tank is doesn't really stand a chance either. I mean, we'll move it back anyway. Why not? But we got to hold Kalabaka for two turns. So again, just hold, hold. But the reason why we're folding back early is because we need one turn to move and one turn to entrench. Once we entrench, we're going to be in a much safer spot. But if we don't entrench, um, we're going to have a real rough time of things. And just in case the Greeks do better than expected. We'll send them some supplies. There we are, there's the bait. That's a lot of tanks. So Mount Olympus held for one turn. We can now withdraw. Uh, the Serbi pass we need to hold for one turn. So once again, fortify, fortify, uh, undo, undo, move this troop over here, uh, undo. This troop needs to go over here. Run over, run away. Run away, dig in. And let's move the armor over here. So it's got a hold for one turn. It probably isn't going to, but um, we will see. I do want to keep your Australians alive for the extra cushy 50 points. But I'm hoping that if I retreat one way, they go that way, and if I retreat the other way, they go the other way, so. Goodbye, Greeks. It was nice knowing you. Don't attack. Don't attack. Don't attack. Don't attack. Thank you very much. So with this secure, we can now retreat back over here. Get rid of our supply points. Get them behind the objective, if possible. And let's start retreating back to Lamia, which we need to hold by turn five. So start moving back the Australians so they can get me into this position. And once we're in that position, we should be pretty safe because they will begin to break through. But we just want to make sure we have a staggered withdrawal.
I believe that's most of the Australian points gone. Much to my chagrin. I'm going to treat this guy all the way back. I need the New Zealand troops so you can, uh, they can bite the bullet. And worst case now I can retreat the uh, the boys. Uh, I want that on the other side of the river, if I'm honest with you. I can retreat the boys back even further. I've crossed a bit early. I hadn't expected them to cross this soon. So, we need to hold Lamia by turn 5, so immediately start digging in. Can this actually do any damage to any of these tanks? Probably not. New Zealand, uh, let's take this guy in and then retreat this guy back. It's got a gradual draw. I want to keep that supply, that's the thing. Move the tank up as a sacrificial lamb, but it's just not a good idea. Why do I do all of that? Lamia's has already been held. There's no point holding it anymore. <gasps> Get everything fucking back. You're going to hold because I need time to uh, dig in. Simply put.
Uh, lol, no. Uh, actually, I do need you to draw. Because um, you're Australian, so. Good luck with that. Hold on. I wonder if I can get rid of your engineers to give them to this guy. Again, not. I can't really do that. Okay, um, did you actually hold from play for that turn? Yeah, so now we just run. Everyone run away. Apart from the tank. Run! <laughs> run, bitch, run! <laughs> yes, run back away! Wow, um, got very lucky there. Uh, very lucky. Uh, well, an offense map either goes very well because the AI doesn't know. Sort of, it seems very random what the AI will do on a lot of defensive maps, which is really good because it means sometimes they can just like blitzkrieg straight through, and other times um, you can distract them and keep them more occupied. But normally, I can hold them along this river line, but of course, that's on easy difficulty. Um, and and sometimes I've had to draw down to for map lay. But I didn't, normally I don't get broken through from a play, so that was very interesting. So, during the later Battle of Crete, Admiral Andrew Cunningham was cautioned by the army that further evacuations might entail losing too many ships. To which he replied, it takes the Navy three years to build a ship. It will take 300 years to build a new tradition. The evacuation will continue. Again, some, we don't really see a lot about people like Andrew Cunningham. Um, like or Admiral Andrew Cunningham or a lot of the other generals or commanders in Ethiopia or North Africa. Of course, you hear about Montgomery towards the end of the war, but you don't hear about the earlier sort of commanders in the war. So I think it's again the good thing about these. You can tell the effort that goes in by these developers to explain these sort of campaigns and these theatres and sort of demonstrate who was in command and, and really set the scene, which I really like. Uh, what time is it? Mm, yeah, almost time. Okay. So the Mediterranean. Oh, we're already done. So what will they give us? So they're giving me garbage, basically. So this is no value to me. <laughs> I want to buy it so I can throw it in a bin. But the bombers are. I'll always pay for bombers. So, Battle Axe. Due to the stubborn Australian defensive to Brooke, Rommel's first offensive in North Africa has come to a halt after taking Salon. Axe's supply lines simply cannot sustain further advances without Tobruk's port facilities. A period of limited local clashes followed. In June, the Tiger convoy delivered hundreds of new tanks to the British and Alexander Rear. With these reinforcements, Wavo hoped to relieve Tobruk and expel Axe's forces from Cyrenica. However, with no reserves and not enough infantry, the attacking force is brittle and tactically still far from the match for German combined arms. This is all your uh, a single set piece battle for this theatre. So if we can get Hellfire Pass, life will come easier for the next scenario. So orders from Whitehall. The time has come to relieve to Brook. If only they could see the realities here on the ground. Our forces are still rebuilding after losses during Operation Brevity. In truth, it's hard to see us breaking through to the brook. However, capturing and holding Hellfire Pass might be possible and would serve us well in the future operations. Advance carefully and expect heavy counterattacks by the Africa Corps. To be frank, not much is expected from this operation. So, this is rather unique. There's no point breaking through. Of course, an easier point you probably can break through, but there's no point breaking through into the brook because you won't be able to. Um, because it, in here is a mass of German armour. So what you need to be just sort of doing is slowly punching your way through here, trying to get points and hoping beyond hope. 
that you can maintain a, uh, you can get some advances done from this. So the first thing I like to do is, of course, massively upgrade my armor. Put some engineers in. Let's spend all the points. Uh, 70 on a Matilda. 50 on a quarter pounder. Another 50 on a quarter pounder. And then take a look at these guys. Upgrade these fellows a bit. And then see about potentially upgrading. Well, there's no real need to upgrade these. I don't think they'll attack uh, and take the brook. Uh, they should be pretty well supplied, which they are because we held on to that supply in the previous scenarios. And so all we have to sort of do is do our best to mass upgrade our units for our breakthrough. From here, I am going to spend some of my points on breaking through here. Because I I desperately need to get more points, really. Now, I could use the QE bombardment, but I don't need to do it yet. Uh, I'd rather just take Hellfire Pass and see if I can break through that way. So instead, I only use two of my bombers for what is going to be a bit of a butcher. A bit of a butchery. So I need to take Fork Boy by turn two and hold until turn... So take by turn one and hold until turn two, which is insanity. How on earth you expect me to take Fort Capuzzi by turn one? You are having a laugh. Good luck with that, that's all I can say. We will get pushed back off those ridges. Yeah, we're never gonna hold that. I mean, we hold City Omar, I guess. But uh, we were never going to break through all of those at once. So we can do a lot of damage to these units. Um, really, I want to weaken the front runners. The ones that I can't really do any damage to. Uh, and I see what else I want to pull off. I can do one to two on him, but it's just not worth it. This is going to be a, just a tank slog, which I don't really like. Where are these guys getting supplied from? Right, where's the Royal Tank Regiment? Don't think that was a good idea, but we'll give it a go anyway.
Yeah, it wasn't worth it. Retreat. So let's take a look. Who were the strongest? Nice. Not worth it. I'm gonna have to retreat back over here. I'm just gonna split me in two. I wonder if I can do some stuff over here. Nah, no chance. The book is well and truly held in one place. I think I'm going to redo this scenario. I'm going to redo the scenario. Because those tanks I think are persistent. And if I decide to... If I want to continue for the next campaign, I don't want to have my entire tank forces annihilated for the next battle. There's no point upgrading your Australian infantry, there's no point. Well now I've got three of these bad boys, so I'm not going to complain too much. holding City Omar. I'm not going to advance any further than that. This is going to hold the, uh, the supply dump. It's not worth to push, is it? It's too dangerous to push this. Oh, this is how you're supposed to push into here. I see. Huh, <laughs> lol, I don't think so. Are you insane? 
I mean, the fight fort's been destroyed. There's, that's insanity. I'm not pushing that. And so I would have the supply, aren't I? Let's plan this out. You're too strong, you need to get bombed into the ground. Okay, that works. With the tank dead, we shouldn't have to struggle too much. Hmm, he's going for Blitzkrieg. Uh, city Barani, no, don't do that. Where's my supplies coming from? Okay, it's not too bad. One to one. We can do some stuff here. Not bad, not bad. Don't need to keep the RTR alive, but this isn't too shabby. It wasn't that bad. I mean, because I got the extra bomber, but I, I think I would have held without the extra bomber anyway, but it just, uh... It's just a bit of a tight squeeze, if you know what I mean. As long as I don't take uh, Hellfire Pass, I'm a happy camper. Still, I lost a lot of tanks. With a hair is what it is. 
And so our next mission is Amber Alagi. After the fall of Eritrea, the Mali land and most of Abyssinia, what remained of the coherent Italian formations in East Africa fell back to Amber Alagi. Located midway between Asmara and Addis Ababa, the forts and mountains of the area would serve as the last stand of the Duke of Deosta and his bedraggled forces. And this, I believe, was the conclusion of the Ethiopia campaign. So, what, even though these campaigns are side theatres to an extent, um, the game is good because it takes the logistics into account. So, normally you, you wouldn't be able to play this in, in an RTS game because it would be boring because there's not a lot going on but because of this type of gameplay about logistics and uh, resupply um and of course breaking through lines and that it's actually a pretty a pretty fun experience playing those sort of scenarios so good news commander the italian army in east africa is completely falling apart the last combat effective troops are entrenching the amber laggy you must root the enemy from this last stronghold as quickly as possible middle east command is desperately short of troops and eagerly awaits redeployment of most of our forces from east africa to the desperate struggles in the western desert and so down south we have a, a list of troops and up north we've got a line of troops as well now i don't really want to equip these guys with too much stuff simply because i want to save the points because i know this is a final sort of hurrah so once again equip our best troops So we're going to have two frontline breakers, give this guy something cheap like a quarter pounder. And then take a look at our supplies. We're going to be out of supply in the first turn here. So put one down here and put one down here. And then take our turns. Necessary. We definitely need to keep pushing as quickly as possible. I've got to repeat the same process down here. One to one. I can live with that. my Bedford truck and then we need to take Adua and Falaga Pass and then there's Fort to Solly Garrison which I have no idea which unit that is. A quick resupply there. Another Bedford truck of course. Power to supply, pretty rough. But we're almost in sight of what we need to get. So we're going to be out of uh, supply next turn, so we may as well move this forward. Well, a pretty easy campaign. If you open the sun, it's more of a manoeuvre campaign and a logistics campaign. How close can I put it? Not very close. I'm gonna have to use one of the Bedford trucks. I feel like they once like they like to give you the Bedford trucks on purpose. We're gonna be out of supply this turn. So we may as well keep on advancing from the north. Ooh. 
That's a bad trade now. Yeah, I've got to use another Bedford truck. There we are. Wow, that uh, beat the shit out of me. Where's the enemy being supplied from that point there? Ooh. Might as well send these guys around. No push there. No jump today. You're going to end up starving, but hey ho. Wonder if I can actually repair that. Not this turn, but next turn. I need to take Amber Laggy because that makes everyone route. Repair that. Uh, that's not the button I want to press. Unless you've got yourself another buoy, I don't think I can break this. We have to break it from the north. Hmm. We could take Falaga Pass now. If we're desperate. <sighs> Should have taken Falaga Pass. That should have been first my priorities. Ah! How many points is that? It's only 20 points. It's not in the world. I can't break that. You're breached, but that serves no purpose to me. I have to take the supplies from here, aren't I? Retreat. Retreat back, boys.
This does not help me. I can't break you. I don't have the resources to break you. Pity because you're also being supplied there, so pretty much stops me in my tracks. Huh. Why is there no supply in here? You should be getting supplied. As a size that for one turn have no supply, that's me over. Um, let's surrender. So the mistake there was of course not putting more points into North. I think I should just go all in on the Northern point. Of course I'll have air this time, but I don't really want to use it unless I have to, you know. You know what I mean. I don't want to have too much in easy mode. Saying that, I don't have a lot of points anyway. Uh, can I change you? Can I get one of these quill pounders and give you um, one of these bad boys? Mm, I'll give you that instead. And then you can have whatever you want. Uh, two engineers. I suspect I got given engineers. I've already cheated. I've already cheated. Oh well. Again, let's pump up the supply. End our turn. We should break through this. It should be a pretty easy job now. I won't use yeah unless I absolutely have to. And I immediately use my, lose my engineer. Wonderful. Already off to a good start. Thank you. Um, why won't you go any further north? No idea. No idea. Uh, I'm not using the air attacks. So what you can do is, if you've got weak troops, you can shuffle them like this and say, oh, I'll get rid of five of those. Um, but you are somewhat limited in how much you can do it, especially because a lot of the time it's time sensitive and you can't really waste time doing it. Mm. I'm going to be a bit conservative this time with my troops and not overdo it. One to one, one to one, refill, move over there, uh, move this guy behind. Yeah, this is better. Uh, yeah.
Give these guys engineers. Um, I don't want to break McCarty via conventional means just yet. Because I did that last time and lost all my good steps. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to start pushing again and I'm not going to be able to keep pushing. Because of the lack of supply. So immediately fall back and just keep on going back and forth along the line. I'm going to close you down. Can I close you down? Apparently not, no reorg. Can I close this unit down? No. Let's repair that river. And take the Liger Pass next this time. It tricks you. You think you want to get the surrender first, but actually, you want to get the surrender when it's no when it's have no practical value, which is a bit of a, a bit of a pain. One turn of no supply again. Wonderful. This goes up and down by its own whims, which is a pain in the ass. Like, ah, oh, he wanted supply this turn. Well, tough luck. I can wait one turn to take this. Yeah, I can wait. Let's replen everyone up. Where has all my supply gone? There's been Thanos snapped everyone. Ah, oh, we're back. Oh, thank you for the supply again. And then it's just a case of slowly but surely Making my way round town. Making my way downtown. This is a bit easier because they gave me a load of engineers, which is a bit of a oof moment, but here. Yeah. I'm not going to complain about the three engineers. Now, with you well and truly encompassed, we should be able to knock you pretty clearly out. Should be still pretty workable. It's got no supply this turn again. It's like, ah, oh, this turn you could have no supply. I I think this is because I didn't take the bonus objective, just means it sort of means you get no uh your supplies is all over the place. It makes it exceedingly difficult to uh, do anything. Yay, victory. I suspect if you air spam this with air, you could probably get an easy win here without losing too many troops. Mm. 
but I need to conserve it. End of an empire. With the fall of Alba Alagi and the surrender of the Duke of Aosta, Italian ambitions of the African Empire were ever laid to rest. Smaller scale fighting in Ethiopia would continue for many months, but the outcome was never in question and most Allied troops could be redeployed to the Western Front. And there you have it. The fall of Ethiopia. So I feel for, sorry for the Duke of Aosta. <laughs> um, because he was sort of left with a doomed, uh, doomed objective. So, exporter. During the Anglo-Iraqi War of 1941, the British discovered that the Luftwaffe was using Vichy French air bases in Syria to stage in supplies and combat aircraft in support of Rashid Ali's coup d'etat in Iraq. Although the Iraqi coup was defeated in a mere month, the British could not ignore the fact that Vichy France had allowed Axis forces access to their territory. With the somewhat hesitant support of the Free French, it was decided to invade Syria and Lebanon, thus eliminating any risk of a future Vichy French meddling in the theatre. Feels bad, man. Baba Richie Farts is getting bullied. The collaborationist Vichy French presence in Syria and Lebanon can no longer be tolerated. You have to put you've been put in charge of Operation Exporter, which will secure these territories and pass them on to the Free French. Australian First Corps makes up the bulk of your invasion force. In accordance with Free French wishes, we have included within it the first Free French Division. You'll be walking a fine line here. The Free French should be seen to be taking an active role, but try to avoid getting them in any pitched battles involving real losses. Remember, these soldiers will be fighting their own countrymen. Hmm. Again, something you don't really know about. Or you don't really take you take sort of for granted. So quarter pounders, uh, give one to this guy, give one to this guy. Australian troops. Do I need to really give this guy any troops? Probably not. Three French troops. Um, let's undo that. Because this guy needs some stuff. This guy needs some milk. Uh, I may just close you down completely. And give it to this guy instead. I can't get rid of you completely, but uh, oh, I can. There we are. As for you, you can also go the way to Dodo. I'm having to reorganise my troops, which is something I don't really like to do. Because <laughs> it generally means I'm on a, on a bad a bad stretch. So we also got some commandos here to land. And they're actually pretty good, so try and preserve them. I suppose I put these guys here. Just in case anything bad happens to us. Don't know why my Australian troops are so battered. I mean, I do actually. They got wiped in Greece. <laughs> but we don't talk about that. Hmm. Wow, uh, I may actually have to use. Before we're going to use you. God, I love Bedford trucks. No, can't do that. Close me down. I wonder if I can just keep pushing. Probably not. I've got to retreat. Literally killed by a 
Boss. <laughs> Killed by a horse, I got you shit. I'm fucked. No, I misclicked. I mean, I'll take it, but I misclicked. And I misclicked. Australian boys are fucked. I mean, if I, if I keep on pushing along there, I'll have an easy win, so it's not the end of the world. Don't counterattack. Oh, thank God. We're fine. We're safe. <gasps> We're not going to starve to death. Probably a waste of uh, air right now, come to think of it. Yeah, a bit of a waste of all my assets. I will take it. Run, gun it, gun it, Chewy. I mean, it did like make this mission very, very easy. <laughs> But you don't really want to be using your best assets on the easy missions. I'll be, uh, I'll be, we will be cheap. I'd hope the next conference I get something good. Ah, oh, thank God. 300 points. Spend 40 on a Blenheim. Yeah. Just in case. And begin the next battle. After the failure of Operation Battle Axe, a four month stalemate settled over the Western Desert. So this is November 1941. Middle East Command underwent a change in leadership where both sides brought in what reinforcement they could muster. The British were more successful, having secured a release in East Africa. Most forces from these theatres could be sent to the newly formed 8th Army in the desert. By November 8th, the army had sufficient forces to make an attempt at relieving Tobruk, this time with much better prospects. I think they actually managed to relieve Tobruk this time as well. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Finally, we've managed to assemble a force that's actually capable of reaching the brook. You outnumbered the axis in all categories of arms, and this time you have ample infantry support to support your drive. Furthermore, South African reserves will be arriving to support the inevitable breakthrough. Turn 6. Your orders are to aim for the brook, and then keep going if at all possible. Don't let your mobile form just get bogged down in positional battles. That's what your infantry is for. Now we've got our new batch of tanks. 
already raring to go. We need to take Bardia Sidiomar, which is by turn 6. Uh, we need to take Bur Akim by turn 8. And of course, we need to take Gar Sidi Ozala, Garzala, and Bardia, which we should all be able to achieve. So, first thing we do is always upgrade our tanks. So, we're going to make sure where their supply coming from. Okay, they got an air supply there, which we need to take. And then we sort of just need to encircle. So if we just punch through this way, we should be good to go. So use this armor step. Give them engineers, give these guys something useful. Tilda. Uh, see if I want to give these guys anything. And because this is sort of the coup de grace, I think we're going to use all our air as well. So, pump up the supply. Because we're going to need that supply nice and pooped. So Bardia wants to be taken by turn 10, so City of Mars is the most important one to take by turn 6. So if we use all our bombers, we should be able to easily break that. He says, trying not to cry. Around or along? Let's see what enemy tanks are. Around. Oh, hello. We'll have to win the uh, tank battle first. While also putting supply dump down here as well. There you are. I decided I don't do anything for you. Well, my tanks got slapped, so bomb, bomb, replen, bleep. The thing is, you can't you can't let the tanks retreat and reinforce. Once you do suppress them, you uh, you've got to like you've got to kill them in the cradle. I wonder if I can encircle this. I reckon I can. Is it worth it? I think so. Two to one. Let's move them back. And then these guys will slowly starve. I gotta take City Omar by turn six, so that should slowly starve and we should be good. Uh, I gotta take City with that by turn five. I don't think I'm gonna achieve that, but we'll give it a go. Two 
Jesus. The tanks are so disgustingly lethal. They're just overrunning everything. I'm thinking they're still getting supplied from here, so if I blow this bad boy up. That won't do anything. And this certainly won't do anything. There's no reinforcements. Uh, what to do? Anyone over here? I know what I should do. I should aim the cut off over here. There we are, that's better. I think I equipped my units wrong. I should have done more anti tank shifts. I don't think I can win this again. It's going to be a surrender job. A surrender job. My entire tank line's gone. They all got too badly battered. Okay. Toad anti-tank. That is what we need. Toad anti-tank is the answer. We're going to do anti-tank combat here. Close this one down. Ah, this is probably why I shouldn't have uh, got a lot of New Zealand infantry killed. Mm, 
Okay, let's try again. Slow and steady. Can't really afford to uh, to slap you at the moment, so I want to give you give you a turn to live. God, I hate those tanks. The main battle is the tanks. There's no point fighting anywhere else until you've dealt with the tanks. Once the tanks are dealt with, go nuts. But until then, good luck and God bless. That's all I can say. So I've got to stop immediately doing anything and just focus purely on the tanks. I didn't get anything like that, did it? Alright, let's go back to turbo mode, shall we? Let's take our time. No point rushing along. We can't afford to fight the tanks like that. I will fight a tank like that. Uh, put more supply down. There we are. I'll get the tanks first. I have no idea how you'd win this without uh, some cards. Take our time, slow and steady. I don't see any tank. Oh yeah, I see a tank there. Go weaken that tanky boy before we keep on advancing. Good. As long as the tanks are dead, we're fine. 
And then these guys will start starving now. He says, wondering if that's the case. I mean, it says that these guys are starving, so... Maybe we can start moving over and up there. Good engine steps, that's what we needed. Probably going to end up losing these troops because of that, but uh, hey ho. Mm, trucks are available, but I don't need them. Oh, I can't use them really, that's the actual answer. Let's retreat the tax plan. Let's take our time. There's no need to rush this. These guys are slowly starving, I believe. No, they're not starving because they've got that port or that air thing. I should focus on taking Bardia now, really. I don't need to stay here anymore. That's one to one. Mm, close, but no cigar. Where's this HQ, anyway? Oh, you're there. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to hack them by turn 8. Yeah, we can take that fine. Now that I've preserved most of the uh, infantry, well, most of my tanks. Stop pushing me off those points. Wow, wow, that failed us, Millie. So now I've got to deal with this somehow. I wonder if anyone actually at Bizarre. Got an airfield there. I gotta be so careful. 
because a lot of these uh, fresh and fit new troops are hot garbage. Okay, let's blow this guy up. Now hopefully these guys will stop attacking me. Two to zero, not worth it. Um, can't really attack you from there either. What to do then? I can take Bardia by the next turn. That was a wrong. Need to go over here instead. Leave City of Zeg alone. Quest for points, literally what we're doing right now is just a quest for points. If I move this off, move this on. Sorry Indian Brigade, but uh gotta need you to take this position. There we are, supply line is now open. I can hopefully put down another supply hub. Take the supplies away from here. Now I'll go take his Gazala by turn 9. I think all of you guys are more or less starved now, which is great. If I can put this over here. And then put you over here. Should be good. These units are so bad that uh, these just can't take out these Africa Corps troops. Just cursed. Literally fucking cursed. One to one, one to one. Take the one to one. Uh, we should be able to make it. Yeah, I made it. Wow. Uh, let's start hopefully destroying these units now, and we should be able to get some leveling up from it. And that one guy survived, a solemn garrison. The game is very different when you're not playing on easy. It's a lot more uh, challenging and complex. I mean, War in the West, what do you call it? War in the uh, West isn't a particularly difficult one. I mean, it's pretty much the same as easy. It's just a bit harder to start, but this is pretty difficult and medium. 11th Crusade. 
Operation Crusader saw the first large scale employment of the new British Crusader tanks. Although an improvement over previous British cruiser tank models, it was not a game changing weapon. The attempt on Final Crusade in the Middle East occurred in October 1365 and was led by Peter I of Cyprus. It was also referred to as the Sack of Alexandria. And that ends that scenario, which is uh, challenging to say the least. And we get we got garbage. We'll take this, but we have garbage, literal garbage. So I think we're on the final stretch, I think the final three missions. So this is our set piece battle, the second Alamein, which then leads us on to our breakthrough um, to Libya. So October 23rd, 1942. The last three months of 1942 would prove to be a great change in the ties of World War II. On the Eastern Front, the Wehrmacht Sixth Army was surrounded in and around the city of Stalingrad, never to escape. In the Pacific, the Japanese lost the initiative near Guadalcanal, never to regain it. And finally, in Western Desert, Montgomery had patiently assembled an overwhelming force with the aim of entirely destroying the vaunted Panzer Army Africa. A small and desolate train station close to the Mediterranean coast would lend its name to the battle ahead, El Alamein. So, if you take Mercer Mutra, you get a alternative campaign where you push all the way to um, Libya in a couple of months. Uh, whereas if you play conventionally and don't take Mercer Mutra, you will end up just sort of doing the, the historical route. Um, if you do end up pushing all the way to Libya, you actually end up doing Operation Fire and Broomstone where you invade Corsica and um, Sardinia, which is actually very difficult, uh, quite, quite a struggle. But without further ado, let us begin. So, almost a year has passed since your last command. During this period, Rommel managed to push our forces all the way to the gates of Alexandria. Here, where the Cultural Depression prevents any flanking movements through the desert, we finally put an end to his advance. General Montgomery has withstood pressure from Churchill to launch hasty attacks, and as a result, our forces swelled to more than 200,000 men, with over 1,000 tanks and an overwhelming stockpile of artillery pieces. Due to this high density of overwhelming troops, you will control your units on a divisional scale in this battle. Your orders are simple, breach the enemy's defences and crush his army. So, all of these guys are perfectly equipped. Wonderfully wonderfully equipped units, which you don't have to worry about. Like, they're all equipped with engineering, it's a wonderful thing. But, it is a, it is a war of attrition, there's no point pushing and holding. Um, you will have to grind a little bit progressively on the front. So let us bomb uh, Mitteri Ridge first. We did lose one troop there, but it's not the end of the world. And then let's do some bombing on Now the aim here is not to take the objectives just yet. You want to feed the enemy in and gradually wear him down. Like so. And then of course they'll bring the reinforcements in and you'll counterattack and you'll just keep doing that over and over and over. Uh, let us suppress you first, shall we? Oh, you motherfucker. Now I've got to sort of deal with this arsehole. It's not really worth fighting him over this.
And we can send the tanks in if you desperately need to. I'll take it. I don't agree with it, but I'll take it. Treat it again. I'm going to take a risk here. Big old risk. What am I with a tank? Oh, I got stuck. Don't trust this, but I'm going to take it. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Uh, overrun. Now we're fucked. That's tanks we can't replace. Don't fall for it. Don't try any breakthroughs. This is a grind. Nothing more, nothing less. Now the infantry on your hand. We can just throw through here. Because the inventory is disposable, whereas the other stuff is not. I can live with that. I can live with that. Hmm. Oh, we ain't taking Kidney Ridge. Oh, the Devil's Garden this turn. My own fault, I didn't play by my own set of rules.
Well, if you're gonna die, I might as well take some guards with you. No digging in now. <sighs> well, that's not very fun. Guard my ass. Just kidding, it was a rear guard, guys. I'll take those three points. Possibly one. It's very easy to get through to Moose Mutra, but uh, unfortunately, I screwed up. I still think I get my points regardless of whether or not I uh, lose that objective. Yeah, I still get it. That's fine. Okay, let's bomb you first. One, two. One to one, one to one. Not two, one to one. Let's YOLO to scare this guy. Time to start running, boys. I didn't realise how much of a slog this battle was in real life. I could take Master Lucha, but I don't want to take Master Lucha. It basically destroyed my, uh, my army, so I don't really want to. So I feel, well, with this game, you need, um, what's the word, you need, to, because it's persistent, generally speaking, as long as you're doing pretty well throughout, you'll be able to complete most of your objectives, but if you're sort of struggling halfway, then eventually those harder objectives will get more and more out of reach, and then you're sort of uh, done for. So in this case, it's highly, I, I just think, I was, it's highly unlikely I'll be able to do the optional objectives because of, um, that's how badly boned I am in terms of points and stuff and gear. Now I probably could have got the optional objective if I'd had used my cards, but uh, no one wants to use their cards. And I don't really want the optional objective. Because I think it only gives you that Second new, new scenario, I don't think it gives you any bonuses to troops or anything like that. Oh, um, positioning. 
so see I can't do the aggressive plan. So let's buy our future asset and get to the next now. So we've got Ella Gella and Tripoli and I believe that ends the uh, game or ends the DLC. So after defeating near El Alamein, the torch landings in Morocco and Algeria forced Rommel to give up any idea of a serious delaying action in Cyrenica. Instead, the tattered remnants and Africa Corps conducted a month-long retreat that did not stop until they reached the positions near El Agelia. Here, the landscape offered only narrow avenues of advance near the coast. But as often in the case in North Africa, the desert flank was open and provided Montgomery's 8th Army with an ideal opportunity for an end run. And of course, if we take this, it gives us a better standing for a future scenario. Sockner. So, Rommel has lost most of his infantry in the retreat from El Alamein. What remains of his force are mostly small elite groupings, the leftovers of his shattered mobile divisions. Here at El Gelia, the terrain allows for such a relatively small force to make a stand, as the all-important coast road runs through a series of terrain bottlenecks. Consequently, Mech advised against immediate frontal assault along the coast, rather the desert further inland offers ideal terrain. So here we have our tank units. I'm pretty sure if you did better, you'd have more, but alas, it is what it is. So should I give the tank armor? T I can't give you any tank armor, so let's undo that. Uh, okay. One. UK infantry. One, two, three. Uh, New Zealand infantry. Might as well use all the points now. Mm, let's get a couple of AT guns. Buy the expensive stuff. Get a couple of Valentines. Let's buy everything. Fuck it. And then let's pump up our supply. So where can we put another supply point down? We can't put it anywhere. So of course you can push down to Marada, I wouldn't recommend it, um, especially with what I've got left, which is not a lot of troops, but I will may use the infantry brigade and rush down there, uh, because I need to take Sokna by turn 9, which is more than achievable if I have the right supply, which I don't, so actually it's not achievable in the slightest. The only way you can achieve that, I believe, is if you've got airdrops which uh, I do not have in my bag of tricks, so unfortunately I don't think it's going to be achievable. So I'm going to use everything I've got at my disposal here. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think I'm too badly damaged from the previous, uh, previous forays. Such a risk, I just don't have the air. I can't stop those tanks, so I'm not going to try.
Oh wow, that's me out. <laughs> that's that's a scenario over already. <laughs> Yeah, that's a completely lost cause now. Um, we'll give it a go anyway, but... So I think you're supposed to dart over here, but... Uh, I won't be able to shoot that. I can't achieve that. It's supposed to go in this wide encirclement, but it's not feasible. How are you not supplied? You were literally supplied five minutes ago, you bastard. None of these guys have been supplied, uh, which is pretty cursed. All my tanks have been put in a cuck shed. <laughs> Fucking cursed. No awful pain, absolute misery. Making us sit here taking our time, that's all we're doing. One to one, one to one, one to one works. That was fun, wasn't it?
sacrifice I was willing to make for the greater good. I didn't want to do that. And now that tank is basically fucked. I know it, you know it, we all know it. And I only hope that you die a quick and painful death. Ah, oh, thank god. <laughs> thank god. Yeah, a pretty rough scenario because I didn't do Al main very well. So, with 30 core spearheading a pursuit alone since Alamein, it was intended that an additional core be brought forward to support in its final drive on Tripoli. However, a Mediterranean storm wrecked havoc to 8th Army's rear, destroying the desperately needed supplies in its supply ports. Because of this, Montgomery had to scale back the planned offensive and take personal command of the troops in the field, while 30 core prepared to exploit the desert flanks. I've got no troops left. I've got no cars left. We're in a bad spot. But it is literally the final level, so... Let's start some good news. There are reports of bickering within Axis command. It seems Rommel wants to retreat to Grazan. Uh, well, Rommel wants to retreat and Grazani wants to stand and fight. How times have changed. The upshot is that the defensive efforts have become poorly coordinated. Sadly, there's also bad news. Storms at sea have frustrated their efforts to increase the size of your forces planned. I want to recognize the issue and has dispatched this army command to assist your drive on Tripoli. One command for the coast and one for the desert flank. Onwards to Tripoli. Right. Um... Unless you've got copious amounts of armour. Okay, this ain't too bad. This ain't too bad. And of course, if you can, you can get try and get... Oh no, we got one more scenario left. I think we need to take Wadi Akarit. But, um... Hey-ho. We're continuing to break through... <laughs> We're continuing to break through the pain. Luckily, I think most of their troops are beginning to collapse, so it's not the end of the world. I can actually afford to replace my men. I don't really guard, so it's not in the world. Still no reinforcements though. I would love some hanging reinforcements. There's only one thing I can do in this situation. Counter push. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck game? What do you want me to do? Just run to Tripoli, basically. That's what you want me to do, isn't it? Right, game. I'm running to Tripoli, that's what I'm doing. And I, I can't, I can't make it. I can't push across. <laughs> it's a ogre. It's a ogre. I can't break it. Okay. It gets like the last scenario, so I just don't have the resources. So I'm gonna have to cheese it now. I'm gonna have to cheese it with the provided airstrikes. I'm start some good news. Shut up, game. And you know what? You're gonna get. Completely collapsed, so I can upgrade this instead. Okay, that's all we got. Okay, we're going to fight in the front. So this guy's got eight attacks. This guy's got six, 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 six. So the tank has to go. The tank is the target. Push, but it's risky. We'll push, but it's risky. I think this gives me a bloody. a van, anyway. Oh, now you want to retreat, eh? <laughs> this game, this time the game has decided not to counter attack. Bomb this guy. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. 
I've got to stop you doing some fancy memes on me. That's all I really care about. Oh, nice obsession. He's probably about to encircle me, but hey, here. It is what it is. No, don't encircle me. If you do, I will die. Like, literally die. Oh, one pack going back. Oh, that's always fun. I don't have the supplies for you to keep doing this to me. And the reason I don't have enough supplies because there we are. That was good. Let's go round. How do my troops not have supply? The trick is to lose every mission so you get a free bear strike. That's, that's the answer to every question. Two to one, two to one, I'll take it. I don't think we're going to have any supply now. Oh, we do. We just need to take Murata and then we're good. Then we're good and we can keep on moving to Tripoli. Job done. Was it worth it? Of course not. Well, I won't be taking you in my turn five unless I decide to lose myself. You can just chill there. The supply issues are so bad in this campaign. bomb you now. Is it enough? I think so. And that wasn't enough. Uh, it's triply undefended. It is. In which case we are fine.
How? <sighs> How are you so powerful? That game. Take by turn seven. I'm not doing that, so uh, good boy. It's such a struggle. A real, a real struggle. So I would recommend if you if you like this game and you want to play the Yacht History, play on easy. But um, because you can you can tell it gets a lot harder as the game goes on. When all your units have become garbage. Nothing has stopped us since the Battle of Egypt began on 23rd of October 1942. Nothing will stop us now. Some must stay back to begin with, but we will all be in the hunt eventually. On to Tripoli, Bernard L. Montgomery, and a message to all the 8th Army troops. January 12th, 1943. And they are the final mission. Good luck, because this is yeah, Wadi Akalit. So on February 23rd, 1943, Rommel will launch a spoiling attack against Commonwealth forces near Medini. Despite commitment of 20 new Tiger tanks, it failed miserably. Axis forces fell back to lick the wounds on the Marath line, awaiting an Edward attack by the 8th Army. In mid-March, that attack came as Montgomery's forces launched Operation Pugilist. A frontal assault on Yax's position, supported by a wide flanking maneuver. This was to be the last operation of the Desert War proper. So this one, it, it actually this just gives you a little bonus message because of course, if you play War in the West, you'll know that the first mission is the Wadi Akaret mission, uh, and so it's a sort of a a bonus to see if you could reach where the game began, if you know what I mean. What have I got left? A mess. Um, following the failed counterattack in February, the Axis have dug in like ticks on the Marath line. Now the time has come to break this position. 30 Corps will tie the Axis forces with a frontal assault while the New Zealand Corps launch an extreme flanking move south of the World of Gap. The long range desert group has scoured this location and insists it's the best place to breach the escarpment undetected. You have to charge through the gap and envelope the Marath line, and we aren't doing that. We are just going to be punching through the centre because it's the only thing we can afford to do. Sorry. At least they're giving me some good good troops here. Just give me whatever. Give me whatever you can afford to give me. Just let me take the marathon line, that's all I care about. Yay, the world of gap. Yeah, we're not going that way. No, 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 we're not going that way. We're going this way. All these crap armor divisions. That, that probably my fault because I got them all killed, but it doesn't make me feel any better about it. I'll just wear down that line. I don't care about this. <laughs> I don't need the points. I don't need them anymore. Okay, which is the best weapon for the job? None of the stuff I have currently.
because I've also dug in and the tanks are garbage <laughs> because I fucked them all. Marath line. Yes. No. Mm, is it worth it? I mean, the city's now in ruins, so probably not. Sure, I could send the tanks round. Why is unit so garbage? <laughs> I know why, but I just don't, I just, I'm just divorced from reality now. <gasps> you dig in again. I can't care. What do you mean you can dig in straight away to normal? Oh, okay, we'll go round the mouth line. Two to one, not to one, I can live with that. Four to zero, bruh. Not one to one, let's do the not to one then. Got lucky there. Let's throw everything we got through it. Panic. Why are my tanks here? Why are my tanks so garbage? They're veterans and they're still hot garbage. Is there supply line? It's up north, so if I just punch all the way up north, like a like a literal dribbler. There we are. Everything we have to the north. May want to cancel that. I need something a bit stronger than uh that.
I want to stress this is not an intelligent decision. But hey ho, it worked. We've reached a waddy accurate line. Mm. Is it achievable? Yes, it is. The world's luckiest man wins again. Look, I'm such a good gamer. I did the bonus objective. I can go one more turn. That's how you truly breach the, <laughs> the mouth line. Don't go around it. Just punch a hole and hope you break through. Yay, victory! Now we can just mop these guys up. I'm surprised. I'll be surprised if they don't patch it, so you can't just do that. Because it makes the whole scenario a bit redundant. That that was very cathartic being able to do that. I will admit. And that ends the scenario, and I believe ends the DLC. So the full circle. More than 150 scenarios have been created since the opening scenario of the base game, Wadi Accurate. In the immortal words of Winston Churchill, now this is not the end, it's not even the beginning of the end, perhaps the end of the beginning. And so this is a quite, it's quite a nice little medal there, as to say, you know, we put so much of it in, and, and really it is a really fun game. Like, like, doing, playing the different scenarios, and the fact is, they make it so each campaign focuses on, on a different type of gameplay. In the West, it's sort of over, overwhelming firepower and grinding through, and then of course in Barbarossa and Blitzkrieg and Stalingrad, it's, it's Blitzkrieg offences with the occasional grind, and in this, it's, uh, it's sort of a logistical one, as well as the occasional sort of pitched battle, which I think is pretty fun. And that ends the, ends the campaign. So what do I think of the DLC? I think it's a really fun DLC. In terms of difficulty, it's, I would say, just below the Blitzkrieg DLC. Um, even though I found that hard as nails, it's got a few hard levels, but as long as you've prepared in advance and you've got, and you've bought the cards, you should be pretty good. Uh, I don't think the new tiles change the gameplay that much, but um, that's probably a good thing. You don't want to become too mind-numbingly tedious. Um, a really fun take on a desert campaign with smaller sizes, more about manoeuvre warfare. Unfortunately, as you saw towards the end of my campaign, it wasn't much of manoeuvre warfare because uh, my units had been more or less trashed. And that's a really good thing about the game because it's persistent and the units you lose is out of the persistent. It means that your style of gameplay will change or your type of tactics and strategy will change as you go through. If you do extremely well at the start, you be, may be more inclined and be actually be capable with the forces you have left to do these big encirclement offensives and these big blitzkrieg, which case the gameplay comes more about handling the logistics side whereas of course if you've done badly like i did towards the end losing too many troops the game becomes more about sort of attritioning grinding your way through to the more important parts and hoping you can get to the objective before the time runs out and so altogether, it makes it a very fun 
fun game um, with uh, immense replayability. People think it's just a puzzle game and to be fair, logistics side does make it a bit of a puzzler, uh, but there's a general strategy for each map and sometimes the AI can surprise you in terms of how it counters your ability to enact that sacrament and you're always playing for that next turn to see if you can reconnect your supply lines or achieve the breakthrough before the enemy reinforces or withdraws. It's a very fun, fun game. Um, in any case, boys, that's the end of the DLC for Desert Rats. Um, you can see I'm not the best of players, but still I enjoy playing it. And it's a single player casual game, which makes it such a great, great, great strategy game to play. Um, looking for the next DLC, looking forward to the next DLC. I may do the Stalingrad uh, DLC uh, later, depends if I want to play Tropical or not. Uh, and I may do the um, Barbarossa campaign, but I don't think I'll be able to complete them. Because Barbarossa is an extremely hard campaign, I'll be honest with you. Um, a very difficult one. And um, if you and it's very difficult, really hard to pull off. It's very hard to pull off. In any case, I'll leave you to it, boys. Uh, and thank you all for watching. So uh, see you all later. Adieu.